In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the concept of constructing and deconstructing data in Grasshopper. Deconstruction is a method in Grasshopper used for extracting basic information from geometry or other types of objects. So we are going to explore deconstruction of uh, various types of data. Let's go to the component palettes under the vector point. And you can see these two icons uh, presenting construct point and deconstruct point components. Let's first choose the construct point component. We have used this component a few times before in previous tutorials. The construct a point component requires some coordinates as an input. So here we are using the number slider to provide this, uh, these inputs, but you could also use the panel. So I have chosen to use the number slider and I'm going to input the same value to all three uh, coordinates. So we have constructed a point here. And you can see in the Rhino windows, uh, the, the point appears. Now let's go back to the component palettes and uh, grab the deconstruct point component. And let's see what it's going to do. So as soon as I drop the deconstruct point component onto the panel, you can see that it's the opposite of the construct point component. So it requires a point as an input and it outputs three coordinates, x, y, and z. Okay, so now we can connect them, and it wouldn't make uh, much sense in this particular case, because I have su su supplied the coordinates with the numbers, number slider, so the output of the deconstruct component would be just uh, 4, 4, and 4, so the, the exact coordinate that I have supplied. Uh, but let's create a, a bit different scenario. Yeah, let's go under params, geometry, grab point container. Let's right click on it and select set uh, point. And then just pick a point anywhere in the Rhino window. Now let's go under vector point and choose deconstruct point again. And see what we can get here. I'm also going to use a panel so that we can see the output. So now if you pay attention to the output panels, you can see that as soon as I start changing the position of the point, we have our extracted coordinates automatically updated. So I can use these extracted coordinates in other parts of my definition. Let's move on and construct a bit more complex uh, geometry. We're going to create a rep. For that, I'm going to use the first point we have already created, and I'm going to make a couple of copies. I'm also going to turn on the preview so that we see the points in Rhino, and I'm also going to change the position of the second point. Then let's go under Surface, Primitive, and Box to Point. We have been using these, uh, this component before, so, in the Rhino viewport, you can see that we have two grids overlapping. One is from a grasshopper, grasshopper plane, and another one is within Rhino. It's a coordinate system or grid. So, in the command prompt, I'm going to type grid, and then just turn off the Rhino grid so that it's more clean preview. So now let's try to extract some information from this prep. Let's go under Surface, Analysis. Let's grab Deconstruct Prep component. And then also let's grab Prep Edges. So both of these components are conceptually very similar. Now let's connect the Prep Geometry to Deconstruct Prep component. And let's see what we get. So we can extract the points or the, the, the edge points of this box, of this breadth, or 
in other word of words, uh, vertices. We can also extract uh, edges as curves. And we can also extract faces as surfaces. So in here, we initially put an input of just two points. We constructed the box, but then by deconstructing this geometry, we get much more information. So surfaces, curves, and additional points. Let's look at the rep edge edges component. So this is a more um, specific dive into the types of edges that we could have. In this case, we only have the interior edges, so we don't have the naked edges. So this box is a, a solid, uh, watertight solid box. And we also don't have uh, non-manifold edges. The construct uh, rep component also works with other types of reps. So here I'm using a double curved surface referenced from Rhino. I'm going to turn off the preview. And you can see that we get an output of deconstruct rep component of surface. We get four edges and then four vertices. And uh, we don't have interior edges now. We on only have the, uh, the exterior ones. And as you can see here, we have uh, edges as curves. Let's move on now to meshes. So very quickly, for those who might not be familiar with mesh geometry, meshes in very uh, general terms are defined by points or coordinates and the relationship between those points or the topology. So let's start by creating a mesh. Let's go to Vector, Grid, and choose Populate 3D Component. So we have this uh, random set of points within 3D space. Let's reduce the amount of these uh, points. I'm going to use number slider for that. Okay, maybe 10 is not enough. Let's double click and increase the maximum value. I put into 20. And since these points are generated randomly, we can also use seed value to change uh, the arrangement of these points. So as you can imagine, there could be many different ways how to mesh a set of points. So different algorithms or math behind the method of meshing points. In, in this case, we're going to use Delaunay mesh. So under mesh triangulation, let's choose Delaunay uh, component. So the Delaunay mesh component requires a set of points to mesh and a plane. So let's apply the points from populate 3D component. And you can see now that we have in fact created a mesh geometry. Let's now try to deconstruct this mesh and see what kind of data we can get by doing so. So under mesh analysis, let's choose deconstruct mesh component. So let's connect and let's see what we what we get. So the deconstruct mesh component requires a mesh as an input and then it outputs a points, vertices, faces. So pay attention here that in previous example when we extracted rep faces uh, that was actual surface geometry and here mesh faces are indicated if you see in the black hexagonal icon, it's with letters A, B, C, which uh, indicates the direction of this face. So th this is in fact a mesh face type of uh, data. It's um, not the same as uh, surface from rep geometry. Then we have color. 
we can talk about it later, and uh, normals. For this example, I would like to display vectors. So let's go to the component palettes under display and choose vector display component. And it requires a vector and an anchor point to display this vector. We're going to use mesh vertices that we have here in the deconstruct component. And now we can see so now we can see normals um, at all vertices. We could also extract uh, face normals. So under mesh analysis, let's choose face normals component. And with this component, we can actually uh, access uh, the normals at each face of the mesh. And it requires mesh as an input and it outputs the center points of each face and then the normal. So let's input the mesh. And I'm going to use the vector display component that I already have. So just reconnecting. And now we can see normals at each of the faces. Under mesh analysis, we also have mesh edges component. And this component, similar to breadth edges component, allows us to extract specified edges from the mesh. So we have naked edges, internal edges, and uh, non-manifold edges. And uh, in this case, we have the naked edges or the, the boundary edges of the mesh. And uh, we also have uh, interior ones. So pay attention here in the black hexagonal, you can see a line icon, which uh, is different from the breadth edge icon represented by curve. So a line could be a curve, uh, but it's a more primitive data type. And it represents that the edges of the, the mesh uh, faces uh, has to be straight lines, so not curves. So here you can see we have some exterior and interior edges and we don't have any non-manifold edges, which uh, usually is good. And to just to emphasize once again, if I go under params, geometry, and uh, grab curve container, it could uh, it would have worked as well as a line container. Uh, and it's because a line is a curve, is a more primitive type of a curve. So that would have worked. These are just a few very basic examples of deconstructing data within Grasshopper. In the next tutorial, we're going to create a more complex definition using these methods. I will see you then.